Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel where everything you're about to hear and see has been done in one take. I am your host, the One Take Man. Today I'm going to be doing something uh, a little bit different, something from uh, Twitter. Go ahead and follow me there if you're, if you're not, it's where I'm most uh, active. Namely I've noticed uh, there is uh, this guy I've been following. He's called George Stiles. He has, uh, he is, let me quote his bio. Writer of the most animal books ever, working to become a give no f's philosopher. PhD in biochemistry, but all I learned was that I still know nothing. <laughs> and in order to decrease the amount of uh, nothing he knows, he uh, asks questions on his uh, Twitter page. Tons and tons of them. And I want to address, I want to uh, address several of them because a lot of these are really freaking good. And I want to do so in a video, because why not? Why not create more content? I might do a follow-up if I think this uh, goes particularly well. And if the reception for this video is also particularly good. I'll try to stick to uh, 10 for now. So, let's start. If you do, why do you follow the news? Well, it's a, it's a good thing to keep yourself informed, so you know what to expect. However, I have to mention I don't follow I don't follow the news uh, in detail. I because a lot of it is just noise, so I try to stay away from from things like opinion pieces or any kind of uh, debate segments or punditry. I'll I'll mostly stick to the headline and the first and some se and some segments from uh, from the article because that really should tell you everything it is everything you need to know. If it says something like, uh, you won't believe what happens next, or this, or watch what happens when, that's quite fake. That's, that's noise. That's not something you need. Okay, next one. What is your main reason for being on Twitter? I've been pretty, on, I've been pretty honest and forthcoming with that. It's simply to, uh, simply to create something of a, not really a following, but to create an uh, audience for my, uh, for my future books. Do you contemplate both the benefits and the downsides of your beliefs equally? Um, beliefs don't actually work that way. That's, that's really the whole point. You hold them uh, regardless of what it is you actually uh, what it is you actually think, regardless of uh, rationality. Convictions, however, those, uh, those can be weighed. Okay, what's next? Are you for or against political correctness? Uh, it's this is uh, this is structured as a yes or no question, and for the most part, I lean towards yes. Yes. However, I have. Uh, however, there's a however. Namely, political correctness has been created in uh, and created in order to uh, reduce some level reduce some level of uh, political inequity that has uh, that has uh, that emerges in a society. Therefore, therefore, it is a good thing. However, it is not enough. You really need to uh, supplement that somehow. Okay, uh, next thing. Have you ever noticed that when you settle on an absolute, an exception appears? Yeah, no doubt. Okay, do you think critical thinking should be taught from grade school on into high school? Yeah, it really should. Is there a common assumption out there that gets thrown around that you find to be particularly erroneous? Too many to count. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, this one. Do you think that society's expectations for people to conform to each and everything a government spits out is too much or too little? Well, having, well, having uh, people conform to, conform to law is not, is not too much. It's basically required. However, there are however, that's more that's a more general uh, general idea. There are some aspects of the law that do need reform, and in order for that to get, in order for that to work, you really need to work on how society turns people into government. That's really that really goes beyond the scope of this video, though. Mm -hmm -hmm. Do you believe that you have uh, your own unique personal edge over others, even if it's just a wee tiny bit? 
and that others have their own as well? I... I'll say yes. Okay... Are you someone who is never bored? No, I'm not. In life, are you after the truth? Are you talking about scientific truth, emotional truth, personal truth? This is really a loaded question, so... Generally, I think it's better if we approach some level of truth. That's, that's, all I, that's all I can say for now without going into uh, way too many wild tangents that I can't even, uh, that I can't even describe. Mm -hmm. What is your take on the ideas and works of Christopher Hitchens? To be honest, I only know Hitchens through his fanboys, so I can't, uh, can't really give an honest answer here. Why are some animals venomous? What is the venom? Well, venom, like pretty much everything else, appears through appears because of evolutional pressure. Like, how do you uh, how do you deal how do you deal with how do you deal with a problem? How do you deal with catching prey? Some some beings use a more physical means, like you know, biting, scratching, etc. Others use venom. Okay, what else? What else do we have? Do you believe that it is uh, lonely at the top? I don't believe it, I know it. Not, not necessarily from experience. More from uh, testimonials and such. At the heart of it all, are you really motivated by fear? Hard to say, really. And yeah, I have a vanity account by now. Do, we believe, do you believe that we came from a primordial muck supplemented with asteroids collisions? Not sure about the asteroids collisions, but for the most part, I think the primordial muck, muck is uh, is pretty accurate. Then again, given I, you know, I'm not necessarily an expert on biochemistry, and several people who are actually experts in biochemistry have only figured part of the puzzle. All I can really say is that uh, I'm following the, the academic scientific consensus on this. Do you believe in the power of prayer? I actually answered this also in a tweet. However, I can also answer it here. The power of prayer can very easily morph into the power of uh, self-deception. And that just because uh, something happens and it is vaguely related to your prayer, you think it is connected to your prayer, or you think it happened because of your prayer. When in fact it could have just happened. Just saying, randomness exists and and because it is random, there is no correlation. Actually, it is there. There exists a correlation, but there, but there is no way of saying that it is really that the correlation or the connection exists because of the prayer. Maybe something, maybe something else uh, led to that. So you, you really can't say for certain. Okay. Do you think politics gets far too much attention and energy? I think politics for too long hasn't really gotten enough. Like, and this politics is uh, it comes from Greek polis, meaning city, and politics in uh, general would, would mean uh, city affairs or the affairs of society, the affairs of the people that uh, surround us, the affairs that also affect us. So ignoring that is ignoring that is kind of ridiculous. Okay. What do you consider the highest praise a person could possibly receive? <sighs> Fuck me if I know. Do you have trust in anything? Mm. My friends, my family, sometimes. Uh, my knowledge. Certain sources, I guess, and well, scientific method and scientific consensus. Do you think objects can be haunted? Mm. I'm iffy on that. Not necessarily haunted by ghosts, but there might be other uh, influences upon them that could make them, or you could say they are metaphorically haunted. Mm. Is the system designed the way the elites want it, or is it what the greater populace is willing to put up with? 
it's kind of a mix because the system wasn't really thought of uh, from the beginning, so to speak. It's constantly been uh, added to and added to and added to. And not all of the additions make sense by themselves, let alone together. The fact that uh, the fact that we can't really, uh, the fact that they haven't been, uh, the fact that things that don't really make sense haven't been addressed so far, yeah. That that might be because that might be because uh, some people have an, an extraordinary influence in uh, in uh, keeping things as they are, as they as are a benefit to them. Which is something I, is something I personally uh, follow quite a bit. However, it is also because we don't know uh, what to replace that system with, so we prefer to just, so we prefer to just keep it. Uh, do you think whistleblowers are a good thing? Another tweet I also answered, but I'll answer it again. The answer is yes. Whistleblowers are a good thing because in. Uh, in economics, in law, in government, etc. Everything we do is built upon precedent. So if you allow uh, one particular precedent to spread, it becomes the norm. And if that precedent is in some way, in some way damages some uh, convention or some law or whatever, then then you're ma then you're making some then you can make something very dangerous become the norm. That's why you need whistleblowers, to prevent danger from becoming normal. Okay, not... Danger will always appear, but keep the risk of danger low. Do you think humanity could do without government? We could do without the current government, but we'd still uh, go back into some form or another of, uh, of governance. Even if it's just tribes. Even if we were just talking about tribes, we still have, you know, tribe leaders, tribe elders, tribe chiefs, that kind of thing. Do you think that money has made the overall human experience better? Yeah. We really needed money in order to make, uh, in order to make, uh, cooperation work. In order to make, uh, society work. In order for us to understand that there is a value that we can glean from from uh, gathering together in big groups that we call societies, and for these big group big groups to be able to uh, you know build stuff, think of stuff, uh, reason stuff out, etc. And that that was only possible through money, not just money, but whatever. <laughs> if a scientific report stated that stress is good for humans, would you believe it? I'd wait five years for it to be peer-reviewed, then I might. Hmm. Scientific inquiry seems to suggest that modern life is not actually healthy for humans. Do you agree? I think so, yeah. I think a lot of modern, or more specifically, uh, urban lives really do, uh, really do uh, humanity a disservice in that they, we are being uh, disconnected from nature, disconnected from, you know, uh, re regular physical activity, exposure to sunlight, uh, more, uh, a little bit more natural ingredients, and all that kind of other stuff that really makes uh, life uh, enjoyable and worth living. So, yeah, that's something I'd like to see diff to see become different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have you ever told an authoritative figure in your life to go at themselves? Can't recall of anyone I have, no. Were you ever in your life surrounded by assholes? Yes, elementary school. How did you, uh, get out of it? Uh, well, I... I kinda just waited. And then I... and then... when I got, when I got into high school, the, uh... The classes, the classes uh, got changed around, and I was no longer surrounded by high school by assholes. I was surrounded by some assholes, but most of them were off in other classes, thankfully. Mm -hmm. Would you rather be self-employed or employed by someone? Ask me again in five years.
Did you ever do any martial arts? Mm, several actually over the past few years. I won't go into them uh, just now. Mm -hmm. And another, another stretch of dead air. I really hate it, I have to build this. Yeah, this. What stops you from getting a gym membership? I don't have a specific time slot that I can allot for it. Also, I think a lot of gym memberships are... Well, okay, what, I wanted to say they're expensive, but they're not really. My problem with gym memberships is that... Oh, what are you gonna do in a gym? Lift weights? Okay, you can also shift weights around, but... Really, that's not, that's not enough, or that's not what I, would, what I would call a good workout. I need to be... I need to be more in motion than a typical gym would allow me. Do you live by the motto, by the motto, have no regrets? If you don't have any regrets, you're stupid. Sorry. Sorry to say this, but yeah, you are. Do you believe in the, ex in the experts? Well, they're still people. People can still be wrong. But overall, I think they, uh, I think most people are, uh, especially if they earned their places, then I think they are more trustworthy. Uh, there's a there's a some parentheses here, and it says explains what experts are: those holding PhDs, professors, appointed political officials. I'll trust the PhD holders and the professors. However, appointed political officials are not directly appointed by uh, by their competence. They can also be appointed by, you know, political loyalty, or that kind of thing. So. With them, I am less, uh, I am less trusting. What do you, f do you think there is a difference between being good at school and actually being intelligent? Yes, I can't really go into why, but yes, there, uh, there is a difference. Also depends on what kind of uh, school you're going to, or rather how the schooling takes place over there. Besides, we don't actually know all facets of intelligence, we just know then you just know there are some ways you can describe you you can describe it. <laughs> Do you think humanity has become less moral and ethical in current times? As opposed to ancient times, medieval times, Renaissance times? This is really just a hanging question. Sorry, George. And okay, let's find let's find a strong one to close it out. Uh, do you believe there is a limit on what we can perceive? Well, actually, yes. Not not to brag, but I. Uh, did a lot on human machine interfaces while while studying. Okay, not a lot, more than most people. And the groundwork for that is always the uh, the limits of perception, as in how much can you see, uh, how illusions work, how much information one can uh, and one can take in and uh, one can take in and work with. These limits can be can can be changed, and they are not universally available. And they're not universally uh, universally valid, as in people have, you know, different limits. However, overall there is a, overall there is generally a limit to what uh, human perception allows. If we're talking uh, things uh, outside of the senses, well, there are no things outside of the senses, because that's what the senses are meant to do, perceive. If we're talking about something you can perceive uh, without your five senses, then that is, that is something you, uh, into it or think about, or it is something you perceive with a form of perception we have not yet been able to identify. So yeah, that's that's what I'll say to that. And you know what? There's so many more I could go through. I really am going to do a part two. <laughs> so yeah, stick around for that. In the meantime, uh, thank you very much for your attention. If you uh, would like to add anything out of the comment section for that, if you uh, 
If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you want to see when the next video comes out, then go ahead and subscribe. Also, ideally, ring the bell, or whatever else YouTube will require of its users. Until next time, I have been the One Take Man.